Thursday, November 30th. I'm your host, Sarah Beal. On today's show, we will chat with Town Manager Mark Ells, and we'll also take you to this year's Marine Environmental Affairs Shellfish Volunteer Appreciation Party. But first, let's get a look at today's top headlines. The Town of Barnesville Public Health Division will hold a flu clinic at the Hyannis Youth and Community Center on Thursday, December 7th from 2 to 4 p.m. The clinic is open to town residents only and the fee is just $3. For more information, you can call the Health Division at 508-862-4644. The Hyannis High Arts Campus is celebrating the December holiday season with a campus-wide event. From 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday, December 2nd, you can celebrate the season and explore artful creations in four unique settings. The High Arts Campus provides community art space, working artist studios, and a professional artist gallery that support and promote the arts through instruction, events, exhibits, and performances. The campus includes the Geyer Barn, Gallery Art Trio, Studio 46 Melissa Morris, and Bass River Pottery. For more information, you can visit artsbarnstable.com. Food composting is available at the transfer station and recycling center. The goal of the program is to reduce the amount of food waste that gets thrown away with trash, thereby reducing trash disposal costs. Residents with a current trash disposal or recycling only sticker may now drop off their household kitchen, kitchen scraps and food waste for composting at no additional cost. The collection barrels are located in one of the sheds used to contain recycling materials. While, the most, while most kitchen scraps may be composted, such items as kitty litter, plastics, cardboard, and styrofoam may not be disposed of for composting. Up next, we'll talk with Town Manager Mark Ells. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, at Town Council, you do your Town Manager communications, and you've been talking about some watershed uh, issues. Uh, and, you know, there's some stuff going on with Sandwich and Mashpee. So what can you tell, let us know about what's going on with that and what that's all about? Well, this is a result of the comprehensive water management planning that all the communities across Cape Cod are engaged in. Um, more recently, we've worked with the Cape Cod Commission doing uh, the 208 study where we looked in, in a very broad sense at what, what the various options are that are out there and how communities can move forward relevant to, this, to these issues, uh, primarily nutrient loading to our uh, water bodies, but even beyond that under the comprehensive water management planning that we're all doing it's a much broader issue it's everything from on-site title five systems to to nutrient loading uh, and now we're seeing more and more about emerging contaminants but how are you going to manage this resource both salt and fresh fresh including drinking so uh, big issue and mm -hmm. and what this what i've been sharing with the council is that for about the last year, we've been working with Mashpee and Sandwich to develop an intermunicipal agreement. And really what that is, is it's a um, contract between the uh, communities that are involved that lays out how we are going to interact um, relevant to managing the issues in the watershed. And the particular watershed that we're dealing with here is the Pompanesset Bay watershed, which is common to Mashpee, Sandwich, and Barnstable. And when, when we look at how that's allocated, it's about 75% Mashpee, about 20% um, Sandwich, well, no, it's, it's probably a little less. It's probably about 15% sandwich and about 10% Barnstable. Mm -hmm. um, so majority of it's in Mashpee. So we agreed early on that, okay, Mashpee, you're kind of the host here because you got the big share. Yep. And, um, and so we've gone out and sought additional funding to support these efforts, which Mashpee is, has and, and is managing. And we've agreed within it that as we go forward and we have common issues that we need to evaluate, uh, we will coordinate kind of proportionately. This is a 25-year agreement. Uh, in the case of the town of Barnstable, that means that if we're going to enter into the agreement, the town council has to give the town manager authorization to enter into a 25-year agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, on the flip side, when we, because the state's a partner in this too, and again, this all falls under the umbrella of the um, comprehensive water management planning that we do and the 208 study that has already been done. Mm -hmm. So the state will be looking for a 20-year plan even though many of our plans are m looking 
you know, far longer than that at this right. point. We're, we're out to 30, 40, 50 years when we're looking, but the state's going to be looking for a comprehensive water management plan to be approved for 20 years. The IMA will be for 25 years, which makes sense because it one falls kind of within the, the parameters of the other. Mm -hmm. And very simply, it just brings us together to talk about the common issues that we have in the watershed, because the watershed doesn't look at town boundaries. No, it doesn't at all. <laughs> and so we, we and, and if Mashpee's doing something that doesn't make sense for the whole, or if Barnstable is, that's really not where we want to be because we have limited resources. This is a, um, a very large issue to manage mm -hmm. and we want to coordinate and do it um, effectively certainly and uh, in the end you know you have these things called TMDLs you know total maximum load of yeah. nit nutrient into the bays our, our objective here is to get that bay below that TMDL so that it will be a healthy bay. Mm -hmm. um, the other little interesting part of this is that once, if we sign into this, and once the permit is approved for the watershed, I believe it's be the first one in Massachusetts. So um, it, it becomes a model for us as we move forward with other relationships because I think people know, but we have, um, we have, let's see, five major watersheds in Barnstable. This is one of them. This is the furthest to the west, Papanessage, Shoestring Bay. But then heading east, you've got um, three bays. Mm -hmm. Again, same group, Mashpee, Sandwich, and Barnstable. Then you have East Bay, Centerville River, which is entirely in Barnstable, so we won't need the same sort of approach. And then when you head over to the east side, we have Lewis Bay, yep. which is shared between Yarmouth and Barnstable. And then we have Barnstable Harbor, which is Sandwich, Barnstable, and Yarmouth. So we have four opportunities in Barnstable where we're going to be looking at this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a model for us, and then it's a model for the state once we're done. That's so. wonderful. What's the timeline looking for this agreement to, to move forward? It'll be before town council for a first reading at their next meeting. Wonderful. And then uh, we'll need a second reading if approved um, so that, uh, the, you know, second reading, it can be approved if it is approved. Mm -hmm. and then. Subsequent to that, it would, you know, the manager could proceed with entering into it. I believe Mashby and Sandwich have both approved it at this point. Wonderful. I'm not positive, but I believe. I know they've been before their legislative bodies mm -hmm. to, uh, to proceed with this. Great. That's so great to hear, and it's great to see that, the, you know, the towns are going to be working together on this major issue. We all know on Cape Cod that water is just like the numero uno issue that we have to worry about here. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was what was lacking in, in past approaches mm -hmm. because the regulators very much focused on, the, you know, each town being a responsible party to yeah. whatever the issue was, which is still part of it, but, mm -hmm. but that intermunicipal relationship requirement really wasn't there. Yeah. Um, we can still approach it the old way, but we know that that's not going to give us the most effective solution. So this is an, another option. It's great to hear yeah, about Yeah, it that. is, it is. It's a very positive opportunity, I think. We also wanted to talk about uh, Silent Spring is going to start a five-year study in conjunction with, I think you said, Harvard and... University of Rhode Island. University of Rhode Island yep. to study emerging contaminants. Contan cont Contaminants. Contaminants. Yeah. <laughs> Tongue twister. It is. It is. Uh, which I know is a is a something that Silent Spring has been focusing on for many years. So this is wonderful that they're going to study um, here on Cape Cod specifically um, in partnering with some wonderful institutions in the state and yeah. in Rhode Island. I believe it's a five year grant um, partnering with the University of Rhode Island and Harvard. Um, they're going to be looking at uh, these emerging conditions. This is a national issue. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Barn Barnstable has has had these challenges in yep. their water supply. The Cape has had them as well as the nation. Um, as the EPA and the respective state um, environmental protection you know agencies that are out there begin to impose more stringent standards relevant to things that are in our environment um, and create advisory level um, you know 
barriers or, or not, not barriers, but um, you know, they created advisory level identification of a particular c contaminant in the environment and then ultimately make it a um, make it a drinking water standard, and those two are very different. Mm -hmm. uh, but but we know that this is progressing, and we know that PFAS, which was uh, a recent concern uh, in our hyannis water system, relevant to fire foams that were used at the fire training academy mm -hmm. um, and other places, uh, you know, are out there in our environment, and so. More and more, not just here, but um, you know, as as current as net tomorrow, uh, or actually this evening, I'm going to be um, at uh, Boston University School of Public Health uh, in in lecturing on emerging contaminants in water supplies, and it's not focused on the the um, technical side of it, the the chemistry side. It's focused on how community leaders uh, are managing these issues mm -hmm. and how do you maintain a water system, uh, maintain you know economic growth, maintain uh, public confidence and support uh, when you have these challenges. And it's very interesting because the way they're framing it, though a lot of people will want to jump right to some major corporation or some major point, they call them point sources, mm -hmm. uh, such as, you know, perhaps fire foams that are used. Right. The real study, not only by, uh, not only what BU's asking questions about, but what Silent Spring and, and URI and Harvard are studying is you know, the more simple introduction of this into our environment by, um, you know, by, by pans that, uh, you know, nonstick pans, yep. by uh, fire retardant clothing, and other household items that we use every day mm -hmm. because though point sources are a source of contamination, we all put this into the environment every single day. Yep. And just because it goes to a wastewater treatment plant, doesn't mean that the treatment plant is set up to treat this. So right. that becomes a point source in a sense, but you have to ask yourself the basic question, well, where to come from? Mm -hmm. Well, if it's coming from us, then we need to know about it. We need to have the opportunity to modify our behavior, purchasing behavior, yep. or not. I mean, if we don't, then we're gonna have to pay to treat, treat it. Yep. But if we can modify, uh, then we can avoid putting this into our, our system. Now on the CAPE, that the reason there's so much focus here is that um, we have such a sensitive environment here in that we have sand. So basically anything you put on the ground goes down into the aquifer and then can potentially end up in mm -hmm. uh, a, a pond, a, a lake, uh, an estuary, a drinking water supply. And that's not like that everywhere. Mm -hmm. not, you know, lots of parts of the country, it's, it's, it's because of it's a, it's a more impervious sort of material in the ground. Right. Um, you know, it, it, it isn't the same challenge that we have mm -hmm. here. So we, we're being studied more. And it, it's very positive in a sense that, um, you know, we are out ahead of everybody else on this. This is, this is not a surprise. We are not reacting for the most part. We are trying to be proactive and, and managing this so that it isn't a long-term public health issue for us. Interesting, yeah. yeah. And it's such a sensitive issue, like you said, so. It is, yeah. it is. And um, it's, it's one that takes a lot, it's, it's very technical in nature, but the bottom line is um, you gotta have clean waters on Cape Cod, whether they're for drinking or swimming or recreating, because mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're all about. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're managing that. Um, you'll hear me talk during my updates quite a bit about our efforts with Fish and Wildlife to site some more public water supply wells over there on that 250 acre parcel, and that's proceeding. And that will be significant, because we do believe that there aren't up gradient land uses that might allow emerging contaminants to enter the water supply if we're able to cite that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be big for, for us to be able to be successful in, in gaining their agreement that we can investigate and then ultimately cite wells there. And those discussions have been going on. We have another one coming up in two weeks with them. So hopefully we'll secure that and that'll just be a very positive future for us relevant to a portion of this issue. Wow, that's great.
Yeah, it's, it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's very uh, interesting. It's nice that places like, I was at Northeastern recently, BU, and it, what they're doing is they're calling upon the various people who play roles like I do yep. and saying, well, what do you do when this happens? Because, yeah, the student can study the chemistry. Right. But then the decision-making process that follows when you have a challenge related to, to whatever the issue is, mm -hmm. is really what these discussions are all about. Yeah. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to share. And um, they learn from us and we learn from them just based on, you know, their questions oh, yeah. and, and, and being able to present in a way that they will understand and they will, you know, assimilate and they will be able to, you know, come up with their own thoughts and then they share those thoughts with you. So that's great. Yeah, it's a great, great opportunity. Well, thank you so much for coming. Is there anything else you want to talk about before I let you go? I'll be back. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> My guest today is our town manager, Mark Ells. Now let's check out this year's MEA Shellfish Volunteer Appreciation Party. Um, so this year we did tons of different projects, uh, mostly planting cohogs. So we planted about 1.6 million cohogs this year, um, little baby ones the size of Skittles under over 70 nets, um, which is quite a project. Um, lots of digging up cohogs and moving them to different locations. So all those cohogs that you guys are getting out at the landings, you can thank these volunteers behind you. Um, and they've just been crucial to our program. Um, I, we could not do this without them. Um, so this is our volunteer appreciation party, um, a very special one um, where we're honoring Doug Cowlett, our shellfish constable as well. Um, and we do this just to give thanks to all of our volunteers that have, have worked so hard. They've come out um, and they've, they've really offered their time, which is invaluable. Um, when we do clam and class for kids, they all came, they really came together um, and we paired them up with, with kids and with adults to learn how to shellfish. And um, we, we cannot do these programs without them, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, it's just been, it's, it's been amazing. So this is the least that we can do for them, is to, to give them some food, get everyone together, um, not in waders, which is amazing, and um, just give thanks to them. So that's what this day is all about, is just mingling, being happy, um, chit-chatting, and um, thanking the volunteers for all their hard work. No, first of all, it is Volunteer Appreciation Day, and we really do appreciate everything you folks do for us. Uh, you know, I tell everyone, and, and I spread the word, I really think we do have the number one shellfish program in the state. And we do it because of you folks. We do it because of you folks. We do it because of the staff that I have. Uh, I'm extremely lucky to have a dedicated staff. They love what they do. Yeah. And uh, we also, as Liz just mentioned, we took this as an opportunity today to also recognize Doug Cowan. Yeah. You know, Doug, uh, we're all here, quite honestly, because of the things that he has done over the years. You know, I, I, I went through and I asked HR to do some digging in and find out when Doug actually started with the town and uh, you know it took a long digging and I, you know they had to go up in the attic the files went so far back <laughs> but uh, you know Doug started out as a uh, he started out as a seasonal out at Sandy Neck sometime I believe in the early 70s if I'm not mistaken 73 there we go his mind's sharp and uh, the full-time position, his first full-time position, was his deputy conservation officer, and that is back in February of 1973. So he's gone through different changes, different uh, changes in the way the departments have been set up and everything. His position has changed from shellfish warden, shellfish constable, natural resource officer, senior natural resource officer, and uh, to what he is today is the Natural Resource Division Supervisor. So you think about it, that's a little over 44 years of service uh, to this town that Doug has given. Uh, I've worked with Doug for 32 of those years, and uh, I, I know we could swap some stories about some folks we have worked with in the past and, and uh, some of the characters we've met along the way. 
but it's all been all been great. It's been a heck of a ride, and I hope Doug feels the same way. Uh, certainly a lot of fun. Staff we've seen. We got, as I mentioned before, second to none right now. And uh, as I said, this is an opportunity for us just to recognize Doug. I did ask staff this morning. I asked them to come up and tell me, you know, to let me know in one word, describe Doug. And I just want to read a few of the responses. So. <laughs> no, these are, these are good. Uh, start. <laughs> I, I censored some of it, but, you know. But uh, stalwart, supportive, inspiring, heroic, proud, dynamic, strong, relaxed, formidable, Longevity, dedicated, warm-hearted, and I think the best one said it all, Superman. Aww. So again, you know, just uh, thank you all, uh, but I want to say most importantly, Doug, thank you for the services of the town, for your friendship, and all you have done. It's just... Uh, just been a tremendous, uh, just just been tremendous for me and for I know the staff. We're truly grateful. Let's see that total of 391 hours of volunteering for Shellfish and a lot more for Herring as well. Um, we put down 76 nets and totaling 1,674,760 cohogs. We counted them all. <laughs> all right. Um, and we had lots of different groups this year, too. We had AmeriCorps. We had bars, of course. Um, the New England Aquarium, and Donna's here to represent them. Um, we had teens also from the New England Aquarium, which is pretty awesome. Um, residents and several non-residents as well, which is always fun um, when they come over to our town to help out. Okay. Um, I think the highlight of this year probably um, all of the shellfish classes that we did. And that's where all of you guys really pulled together. Um, those are so tricky to do, um, and they take, um, they take all hands on deck. Um, so really amazing. Give yourselves a, a pat on the back for that. All right. So we had uh, razor clam classes. We had kids clamming classes and adult clamming classes. And this is what's amazing. On a Wednesday... We had over 80 people show up to just one of those classes. And we had about 20 volunteers. Um, so over the course of all these classes, we have seen a ton of people. And I just wanted to recognize um, a few of you um, that, were, that were really key. Um, you know I like to do little awards on the side. So um, This year, um, we have four awards to give out. Um, the first one is to Jack Quinn. If you'd come on up here. Come on up, Jack. Come on up. Um, Jack, um, here's your award. The Golden Cohog Award. Thank you very much. There we go, Jack. So um, Jack helped with the Razor Clam classes over the winter, right? That's correct. Pivotal. Um, he... Got his salt solution out, very important salt solution. Got the shovel, was stirring it at the truck. Um, absolutely wonderful. He also got in the newspaper for this and puts a pound of butter in his oh. razor <laughs> It was a misprint. Wrong. It was a misprint. Thank you, Jack, for all your help with the razor. Danielle helps with uh, the kids' claiming class and adult claiming classes every year. But not only that, when Danielle goes out shell fishing, they know that she knows what she's doing. So you have these people that are wandering around lost. They don't know what they're doing. Danielle finds them. They find Danielle, really, and she takes them out on her own time. Um, so that's that's so applaudable. Thank you. Team or team, okay? I mean, these two, we we abuse them. <laughs> Um, it appears they're the only two in town, the only two in town that actually know how to dig steamers. I don't think so. Uh, and they had to teach everyone else. <laughs> so everyone that came on down, including some of our volunteers, 
we found them when we paired them up. So thank you guys so much. Um, we'll get you some knee pads for next year. Okay? All right. Thank you. Guys. This week's community calendar is all about the holidays. Each village in Barnesville hosts their own village event to get everyone in the holiday spirit. Here are the dates and times for all seven upcoming village events. Thanks for joining us today. We will be back tomorrow with an all-new show. On tomorrow's show, we will learn about an upcoming razor clam class with shellfish technician Liz Lewis, and we'll learn about the Heinz Main Street Business Improvement District's plans for the holidays. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Beal.